All right, it looks like we're slowing down a little bit. So again, my name is Amanda Odom. I'm the Long-Term Care Director here at QSource, and we'd like to thank you for joining our Culture of Safety Center Outcomes Congress um, for our initiative uh, related to the CMP funds at year one through year four. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to the team now and let us get started. I can't wait for you to see all the wonderful um, outcomes and improvements that we've been able to make in the collaboration uh, with our facilities across the state. Good afternoon, everybody, or good morning for some. Um, we want to welcome you to our Culture of Safety Center Outcomes Congress. We're so excited um, to be doing this today. Um, it's uh, been such a privilege working with each and every one of you uh, in the facilities um, and uh, on our panel, on our advisory board. We appreciate you so much. Um, this is our long-term care team. I'm sure you probably already know us. Um, we have a um, over 100 years of healthcare experience um, on our team, and we're so passionate about what we do, uh, each and every one of us. Next slide. We want to um, thank you um, to the Culture of Safety Center Advisory Council. Um, without these young ladies and gentlemen, um, we would not have such a successful project. So we want to thank them. Their their input has been valuable, um, and we um, we've been working with most of these uh, people for all of throughout the projects. Um, so we're very, very happy and very thankful for that. Next slide. So our agenda overview today, we, we just want to talk about the CSC project overview, uh, talk about our outcomes, our targeted measures, our success stories, mostly our success stories, because I have to tell you, I am so excited for these facilities. Um, every facility that participated in this project did an awesome job. Um, they all had wonderful outcomes, um, and we are just so happy that uh, we can present some of those today. Wish we could tell, wish we could share every single one of them, but unfortunately, we do, don't have the time for that. But um, next slide, please. So who we are? Well, of course, we're we're QSource. We're a quality improvement company. We've been we've been uh, in the business for for now over fifty years, um, working with healthcare providers, uh, Medicare and Medicaid. Um, we currently operate in eleven states. Um, we have um, the ESRD, the EQRO, and the QIO um, activities. We are the QIO for the state of Indiana which we're very proud of that. Um, and we um, we serve as a the CMS um, uh, affiliate that we work with facilities to improve quality of care and of life in the facilities uh, for our residents. Again, this is what we're passionate about is quality improvement. Uh, next slide. So our civil monetary penalties, of course, these are, I'm sure everyone on the call is familiar with civil monetary penalties. Um, those are fines that are imposed on facilities for um, not being in compliance uh, for regulatory um, reasons. And I don't know if you know, but 90% of those funds are then returned to the state um, so that they can provide projects just as this one to improve the quality and life uh, of residents and their care. Next slide. <clears throat> so the Culture of Safety Center, um, we, um, we are a coordinated collaborative effort in Tennessee to improve uh, resident safety and quality of life in the skilled nursing facilities. Um, we do this by having uh, two aims. And at this time, I'd like to turn over to Lindsay. She's going to tell you about those two aims. All right. So aim one uh, is the summits where we've addressed key resident care, med management, resident caregiver satisfaction, and safety issues for LTC statewide, including the administrators, physicians, uh, nurse practitioners, nurses, CNAs, pharmacists, social workers, and the quality and risk professions. And then aim two, um, the CSE coordinated intensive regional collaborative quality initiatives 
working closely each year with at least 20 facilities in Tennessee to complete a, a PIP or a performance improvement project customized to specific needs of our collaborative members. The CSC collaboratives included monthly virtual meetings with our participating facilities to encourage the peer-to-peer -peer learning and consisted of sharing best practice related to the target areas that we were talking about, detailed evaluations and monitoring techniques, staff empowerment, WAPI, and other QI techniques. Um, in addition to the monthly events, we provided more intensive technical assistance for SNFs that needed the additional assistance as well. Both aims of the CSC initiative have been guided by an advisory council comprised of SNF leadership and stakeholders. I was gonna say next slide, but I've got it, so. <laughs> okay, on this one, each year of this project, um, QSource has hosted an annual summit and invited all the SNFs across the state of Tennessee and we brought nationally recognized experts in the fields of quality, safety, and customer experience. Um, we also included action-oriented breakout sessions focused on best practices aimed at achieving the stated outcomes and incorporating the QI principles. We offered NAB hours to nursing home administrators and nursing CEUs to RNs that were in attendance. Um, and next, we're gonna take a look at the outcomes from our events. Okay, so on average, 12% of Tennessee SNFs attended the annual summits in years one through three. Uh, the first annual summit, QSource hosted a virtual event due to the COVID-19 pandemic um, and for the safety of our attendees. For the second summit, we were able to host an in-person event in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, in the third year of the project, the summit was held in Knoxville, Tennessee as an in-person conference as well. In year four, um, during the six month extension, which you guys are all a part of, QSource hosted live educational webinars, um, each with an esteemed guest speaker in the industry. There were 189 participants registered to attend the first quarter webinar and 98 registered for the second quarter webinar. The relative improvement rate in knowledge among the Tennessee SNFs in attendance averaged 26.2% for the events hosted by QSource in years one through four. After the webinars, QSource distributed a survey to evaluate attendee satisfaction uh, with the event and the speaker. And there was excellent feedback from the evaluations, which included positive comments about the venue, the speakers, and planning. Um, and we're going to share a few quotes with you um, on the next slide. So these, these were from the evaluations that we distributed after the events um, and from all three summits and the live webinars. So it's it's kind of a little bit of everything, but just a few of them. It really is a well-organized seminar and my hat is off to you and your team. I'm new to this industry, so I'm trying to take everything in as quickly as possible. I thought the topics were relevant to what our challenges are currently. Greatly appreciate QSource inviting us to the program. I've attended a lot of seminars for NAB credit over the years, and this one was very well done. Also, the physicians that spoke were wonderful. Great examples of active, engaged physicians. This was an excellent conference, the best I've attended so far. Thank you. And the last, we always enjoy these meetings. The staff at QSource or the presenters always convey the information in a way that you are able to understand. Okay, so aim two. Um, that was our regional collaboratives. The CSC project goal was to engage with a minimum of 20 SNFs each year um, in, in intensive regional collaboratives focused on the most commonly identified improvement opportunities related to resident safety and quality of life. Um, we allowed facilities to identify and choose the topic of focus for their PIPs. Um, and, and we've worked with facilities on QI based on their facility and their custom needs. Um, we educated on QAPI to assist with continuous learning and to spread best practice. Okay, so the benefits of participating in the CSC collaboratives, they include, we offer new skills to improve quality of care. Um, we'll help with troubleshooting challenges, of course, with your peers in a supportive environment and sharing best practice through the collaborative experiences. We're improving quality measure scores and fulfilling the federal QAPI requirement of participation with this PIP. Excuse me. You receive one-on-one -on -one technical assistance and data analysis from your QI advisors and return on investment. Overall, in all four years of the project, we had a decrease in survey citations and an overall decrease in CMPs associated with high-level citations. 
All right. The CSD AIM-2 outcome measures included working on falls, antipsychotics, staffing, and facility-acquired pressure injuries. As you can see, 100% of the facilities completed their PIPs and received one-on-one -on -one technical assistance, and 65% of the facilities completed all four of the Train the Trainer modules. There was a 22% improvement in QAPI knowledge among trained staff and a 12% improvement in staff and resident satisfaction, both exceeding the prioritized goals that we set up. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to Amanda to take a look at the PIP graphs. Um, I think this is the information a lot of people are wanting right here. This is the overall um, graph for year four, the percentage of pressure ulcer injuries uh, baseline compared to their goals. Um, the facilities that have worked with us over the last six months chose to work on falls, antipsychotic reductions, staffing retention, and facility acquired pressure ulcer injuries um, as their main PIP topics. By assisting the facilities with appropriately identifying their root cause analysis through back to basic QAPI principles, they exceeded their 10% relative improvement rate of 4.4%, which is noted there on the right, with 100% improvement at 0% at the completion of the project for pressure ulcer um, injuries. This is amazing. Um, so the facility started as a collective at 4.9% um, and ended at 0%. Um, usually in quality, you do not have a 100% um, relative improvement rate, but it just shows uh, the collaborative work um, that these guys have been able to accomplish with us, and we are so proud um, of their outcomes. We all all know how amazing this improvement is. Pressure injuries can lead to our resident population having increase in pain, decrease in mobility, um, increase in malnutrition, and increase mortality in some cases. Appropriately identification, treatment, and prevention is key to mitigate these risks in our facilities. We're extremely proud of the facilities um, that work with this on evidence-based practices um, and outcomes in this initiative. So I um, just want to give you guys a big round of applause for this. Very, very excited. Next slide. So this represents the percentage of residents on antipsychotic medication baseline to goal. Um, our goal was, again, a 10% RIR um, relative improvement rate. Antipsychotic medications impose high risk for our geriatric population and significantly increase the mortality rate when given in conjunction with dementia. Um, we know this. Um, this has been a practice for many, many years. It's hard when um, the, these residents come into our facility in the community is able to practice a certain set of ways and we are not allowed to. So it's left up to us to, to try to decipher, um, you know, the mental baseline um, for these residents and their mental status history. Um, you know, and then it becomes even more um more detrimental um, for them for us to decipher this uh, when they have diagnosis of dementia or they don't have families that uh, participate in their care. Um, so I'm extremely proud of the facilities that have worked with us through this initiative. Um, they have really dug down deep um, and really have made an impact for uh, our residents throughout Tennessee. Um, the facilities began the project with an average of 26.6% baseline rate for antipsychotic medication and um, through identification of individual root cause analysis we took majority of these facilities and we took resident by resident um, going over their HMPs their history diagnosis, any type of psychological notes. We also um, collaborated with our pharmacist on our team, John Poyot, um, along with the facilities pharmacist and IDT team to come up with this final number um, to, to be able to successfully reduce those medications. Um, at the end of the project, the facilities were at a 23.1% um, RIR surpassing the 10% reduction. Again, just great job, guys. This this really speaks volume of what our Tennessee facilities can do um, when when we just have support uh, across uh, across our uh, volunteer state. Next slide. 
So this this graph represents the percentage of falls and falls with major injury and um, baseline in goal with a 10% relative improvement rate. Falls and falls with major injury continue to be one of the highest risk areas for our long term care facilities. Review of the recent cited tags for the month of March of 2024 continues to have F689 free from accidents and hazards as one of the top 10 most cited citations. The facilities began a rapid cycle improvement in October of 2023, collecting baseline data from um, the months of August, September um, and October for falls. Um, for falls, and this was at 22%, but we also collected the same the same time frame for falls with major injury, which was at 0.8%. Over the course of the project, our facility our facilities continued to identify their RCAs. Um, also, reevaluating um, because we all know as quality projects go along that you're going to have fluctuations. Um, you know, you're going to have peaks and valleys, and when you have peaks, it's often best to reevaluate. Um, to see if there's any more root causes or if we identify a pattern there that we can work upon um, to continue to overall decrease those numbers. Um, in the months of December and January, you can see that across our Tennessee states, and this goes along with our TDH calls, um, we did have an increase of COVID outbreaks, not as significant as prior, but it was significant enough to see that, that tick up um, for those months. And, and then after that, we did have several facilities that reported flu outbreaks as well. So it was back to back outbreaks that, you, you know, really does uh, do detrimental um, damage to the facilities as far as fall rates go. But I am super proud. We are super proud that we were able to help them identify this. Um, and by the end of the project, the final RIR um, was less than a 10% reduction in falls um, at an 18.2% relative improvement rate, um, which is a relative improvement rate of 17.2%. So they surpassed the 10%. And then with fall Falls with major injury, um, we was at 0.4%, which is a 50% reduction, which is a significant in re reduction in falls. As we all know, you know, the mortality rate increases if that resident has dementia diagnosis and then they have a fall with major injury, you know, their likelihood um, of mortality increases significantly um, status post that in less than a year. So, we are truly, truly, truly excited about um, this outcome. Uh, we can't thank our collaboratives enough for the hard work that they've put in um, to accomplish these goals. So again, um, high five for you guys. Next slide. The last slide represents uh, the percentage of nursing staff and administrator staffing baseline. Um, so we're measuring um, retention here. So staffing continues to be an issue for our long term care facilities, as we know, and without qualified staffing retention, we are fighting the uphill battle related to quality of care. This is why we have encouraged staffing retention as one of our main focuses of our quality of safety culture initiative. These facilities began working on this project, attaining data for the percentage of nursing staff and administrative staff that left during the, those month periods. Um, we began staffing as a collective at 12.2%, meaning that there was a 12.2% turnover rate across the clinical and administrative administrator positions. Um, it doesn't seem like a high number, but it, it, it truly is, especially in an industry where we're trying to recover status post pandemic and burnout um, and we are opening up our minds um, for other initiatives um, as far as increasing the staff retentions like in lieu of benefits an increase in pay shift diff um, you know paying closer attention to our uh, employees as individuals so um, so that we create that family-like environment I think we have done a really great job as far as long-term care goes um, with that um, by identifying some of those contributive factors such as 
addressing, you know, orientation practices. Um, the facilities have had a greater improvement than 10% uh, uh, improvement RIR, um, and they ended the project at 11.1%, just slightly above um, the 11%. So we are super excited about these outcomes, um, and we appreciate you guys um, being a part of our collaborative. You do not know how wonderful these facilities have done compared to their peers. Um, as you can see, um, this not only will have an impact as far as uh, your surveys go, we have already seen that, you know, after um, completing the project, uh, you know, the RII or ROI return on investment, you know, is decreasing the citations, um, but also this improvement of quality of care and life in our resident facilities across the state. Next slide. And I'd like to turn it over to um, Ms. Santana. Hello, everyone. In addition to the incredible outcomes that we've had with this project, we also wanted to share some of the feedback that we've received from our participating facilities and our collaborative members. So I pulled a quote from each year of the project. A representative from each of the facilities on this slide actually spoke at one of our summits and shared their success story. So I'll start with Generation of Spencer. In year one at the summit, the administrator stated, by participating in the CSC project, we improved our outcome measures and learned new QI techniques. We enhanced our culture of safety through expertise gained from our QSource advisors and shared experiences from the regional collaborative. And then in year two, an excellent administrator who also now is serving on our advisory council stated, our QI advisors provided so many great tools for use and guided our community down the path to success as we set goals to see reduction in falls and have achieved that month after month. Our facility team also worked with Quality Improvement Advisor to enhance our QAPI program, so there was some additional education there for their facility and for them to improve their QAPI program. And that uh, they felt like they became much more knowledgeable about the QAPI process and improved their QAPI meetings as well to make those more meaningful and more productive. Next slide. For this next facility, we had the privilege of working with this DON for three years as she signed up to participate with us for three consecutive years. And we worked on a falls PIP with this facility as well as an antipsychotic PIP. And she shared the following. She says, I cannot say enough good things about this program. We worked on a psychotropic reduction, which is right in line with state requirements. And this group has helped me with patient each month to reduce the usage for that patient. They brought in a pharmacist, which Amanda already talked about, our consultant pharmacist, each meeting to help us also, and our psychotropic rate has been reduced because of this program. Last year was a tremendous help with fall reduction. And then lastly, in year four, the administrator of Union City stated, thank you so much for being an intricate part of our team. The tools, tips, and suggestions were exactly what we needed. Your expertise and knowledge placed us on a path of success by decreasing our staffing turnover by half, which is absolutely incredible for us. And these results have also served as a morale booster for our team, and we will continue to strive forward for making progress with their retention efforts. So we wanted to share uh, a visual for you so we can look at those results. If you go to next slide, please. This is actually a graph from that facility, Waters of Union City, that I just shared his quote, and it shows you their significant improvement they had in staffing turnover. By working on a staffing PIP with us, they decreased their nursing and admin staffing turnover by 47 percent as compared to the baseline period, and of course overachieving their goal of just a 10 percent reduction in turnover. And then in addition, next slide, we wanted to show you their return on investment, and that was due to their improvement in staffing turnover. In the same reporting baseline period, the facility had spent approximately $180,000 due to staffing turnover as compared to the next quarter after conducting a root cause analysis with their QI advisor and developing new interventions, they were able to reduce their um, cost of turnover to only 
$36,000, which is a total savings and cost avoidance of $144,000 with the improvements that they had made from working with us on this project. So huge kudos to them and um, big thank you to those facilities that did provide us with feedback and quotes that we could, could share with you all um, throughout this project. Next slide. We actually have a facility on the call with us today that you'll get to hear from. They have participated in the project with us during the six month extension. And I have had the honor of working with Agape Rehab Skilled Nursing Facility um, during our six month extension. And here you'll see a picture of their DON Mimi, their administrator Andrew, and Morgan, their ADON, they have a fantastic leadership team. And I am honored to be able to introduce you to Mimi, who will be able to tell you about their experience and success from working with us in the project. And I can't be more proud of their work and their engagement they have had in improving quality of care at their facility. Mimi? Thank you, Santana. So, um, of course, I enrolled in QSource because I had a problem with falls. Um, at the beginning of the project, our fall rate with major injury was at least 3.1%. So we were averaged two major injuries per month um, when we started this project. So I, uh, as always, I lean on other sister facilities that have um, DONs that's been DONs longer than me. Um, and he suggested when I went over to his building, I told him, you know, I had an issue with falls. What do I need to do? I feel like I'm a failure. Um, I want to do better for our residents. And he suggested, he said, hey, I'm working with Santana with QSource. They're amazing. They will help you. And I told him before I left, I said, I need her cell phone, her email, everything you have. And um, as soon as I left, we, uh, I ended up contacting Santana. And I just can't tell you. Um, how thankful we are for her and her team. Um, one of the things that Santana um, done for us is, of course, when you're enrolling, you do feel like you're a failure. She did not. She was very neutral. She was all aboard. Let's get this figured out. Um, and she helped us think outside of the box. What can we do better than what we're already doing? So they, um, she helped us do a root cause analysis to figure out what what is our issues here at the building and one of the things that we identified was that the communication with our staff and um, the safety awareness portion we we needed to do better in that so um, we went ahead and started quickly we thought of trying to get the staff really engaged um, the CNAs and things and what I mean by that is you know we have meetings and such and we talk about falls and we've had this many but they just wasn't getting it so we created a um, calendar if you will and the cnas love coloring it so we have a fall calendar we put up at the front by the nurses station and they'll decorate it they'll color it they mark it off when we have a fall but it was it certainly helped them keep track they were more engaged they wanted to do better with that visual so um we started doing that and they run with it. They they color it every month, like I said, they mark it off and they're very engaged. And now it's become more, they'll come to the calendar and they'll challenge other CNAs on different shifts. For instance, our weekend crew, that um, they'll say, well, we didn't have any falls on the weekend. What happened during the week or what happened during this? So they're more engaged with that. And I can't thank you all enough for that. Um, also, she helped us develop a, a tracking tool to trend for our falls. And that's a spreadsheet that shows um, where the falls occur, the time of day. And we were able to identify that a lot of our falls were happening right after meal times or right at shift change. So management, the management team would come out, start helping more during those times, right with shift change and right after meals. And by meaning that is taking residents to the bathroom. Those are the ones that normally, of course, after they had their meal, they were trying to get to the bathroom, but our other CNAs were assisting the other residents during meal time. So we started being more involved coming out during those times. Um, so like I said, we had um, a 3.1% two major falls every month. 
And when we started working with QSource, we haven't had a major injury in over three months. And that right there, I think, is the best part. And being a new DON, you know, you certainly don't have all the answers. And um, I'm just thankful that QSource was able to help us think outside the box. We were able to reduce our falls. Our team is more engaged. Um, and we're still coming up. We haven't had, knock on wood, a major injury yet. So, uh, I, and not only that, we also had our state inspection. It was the first for me as the DON, the first for Morgan as um, the ADON, and um, they had, we had no clinical findings. So they were happy with our falls program. They only asked me one question and it had to do with an order, nothing about the incident or anything like that. They were completely satisfied. Um, and I just want to say, you know, uh, when Santana was telling us that we were ending our project, I was quite sad. Um, I believe that new DONs or even DONs now uh, need to go through training with them because they will help you. Um, they collaborate with you. It's a neutral thing. You're not penalized and it does work. So. We're looking forward to anything else that you guys may have. We will enroll. Thank you, Mimi. I tell you, I have a yes. smile and ear to ear because those were outstanding results. And we are so proud of you for the work and the engagement that you poured into this project with us. And your residents are very lucky to have you all driving these kind of quality improvements and um, being willing to participate in any opportunity that you have to to make those improvements so thank you again for joining us and speaking Mimi I feel like it's so beneficial and helpful for the facilities that get to hear from each other that peer-to-peer -peer learning that we have uh, really been pushing for for our regional collaboratives to be able to share um, lessons learned and those successes as well that we accomplish at our building. So thank you for sharing. And Amanda, I'll turn it over to you to close us out. Thank you, Mimi, and um, for sharing that. Those are wonderful outcomes. Um, this is what it's all about. Uh, that's what we want. We want you to feel at ease during your state surveys. We want you to feel confident in um, your position. Um, so thank you for being a part of that collaborative, just, uh, just like the rest of our facilities that have been um, with us throughout the years. We really appreciate you and um, your services do not go unnoticed. Uh, you can tell through your collaborative projects, the successes that you have and the passion that you have for our long term care, um, our long term care population. We want you to know that we're not going away. This is the end of the CMP project in the state of Tennessee, but we've been around for 50 for over 50 years in health care and we continue to be uh, we, we will continue to be here. Um, we are working on um, lots of new avenues um, as far as potential projects go um, and we can we will be reaching back out with you, but we will also um, are exploring um, you know, our services uh, status post the CMP project. Um, we're here to assist you. Um, we'll be reaching out to all of our facilities year one through four for re-engagement. Um, we want to make sure that you're maintaining your sustainability after the completion of the project. Um, and we want to update you on our QSource resources and services. We have several avenues that are available to you to obtain resources for evidence-based practices um, that promote the quality of care and life of your residents. Um, you can reach out to any of our individual emails. Um, it is the first initial of our name, um, like Amanda A. My last name is Odom, O-D-O-M, um, at qsource.org. Everybody's email is set up the same way, first initial, full last name, or you can reach out to us at nhassist at qsource.org. We still plan on um, helping Miss Vicki and Miss Julie um, with our little triage of um, 
NHSN assistance. Um, I think that benefits you guys so, so much. Um, so if you're needing anything from us and vice versa, we'll get you to those ladies or they'll get you to us. Um, we're all three here to help you um, when it comes to your infection control um, and NHSN. Um, we want to share that we are relaunching our website, so please check out our website at csc at qsource.org. Um, it's been updated. Um, it's been updated with several uh, sections uh, to our customer success. Our newsletters are all archived out there. Um, we send out a newsletter once a month, so if you're not getting our newsletter, we connect you uh, with what's going on with the updates on TDH, um, CMS regulation updates. Dates. Um, also, um, align upcoming events like um, their shop talks. We want to make sure that you have access to those um, still uh, more. Or if Julie has any other um, workshops that she is completing during that month or that Align is completing, that we have those. Um, also, any upcoming TDH news um, and resources there uh, we want you to have. And then, of course, uh, the resources that we, we see um, coming through all of our major publications um, that are updates for you guys. We also have something fast um, that Lindsay Bug uh, takes care of. It is called our News of the Week. Um, it is a quick seven to 10 minute, 10 minutes is being the longest, uh, roundup of all of the news in skilled nursing um, throughout the course of a week. It can get very bogged down uh, when you get uh, emails um, from different news outlets with updates. Um, so we try to summarize that for everybody um, and catch the highlights. So that's something that you can connect with us on. Um, also, um, on our webpage is a list of our services um, that we provide outside of these types of projects, um, whether that is survey readiness improvement, um, infection control assistance, rapid response. You get an IJ, we're here for you. You need some assistance with survey, we're here for you. We can be that support. Um, any competency-based training like Mimi was talking about um, as far as for DONs, NDS coordinators, um, clinical um, and skilled nursing skills. Um, also, um, any clinical and quality assurance um, improvement consulting that we can help you with. And then always, of course, is MDS optimization. We have two of our team members that are RAC certified, um, and we can answer those questions for you. If for some reason we can't answer those questions, um, we have contacts with um, TDH and Alliant and Leading Age. We will get you to where you need to go um, to, to get those questions answered for you. So so we want you to know that we're not going away, <laughs> that we are still here and that we that our mission has and will always be um, that we promote the quality of care of life of our resident population served. And we do that best by supporting your quality improvement initiatives. Um, we would like to thank you for joining us on our Outcomes Congress meeting, um, and we appreciate the, the time and the collaborative effort uh, that you have established with us here in the state of Tennessee. We appreciate all that you do. Thank you.